Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. This is a statistic we're hearing far too often that in the United States, black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related deaths than any other women. My God. Uh, and the tragic is, the tragic reality is that more than half of these deaths across the country have been deemed preventable. Our next guest personally knows the agony of what a loss can do to the family dynamic forever. Let's take a look. They said, oh, had we gotten her back into the operating room, she would be perfectly fine. Oh, if we had. Well, why the hell didn't they? It was not that she was sick, it's not that she had a pre-existing condition, that she had a heart problem or she had a blood clot. None of that was Kara's case. Please welcome the Emmy-nominated TV judge, Glenn, Glenda Hatchett. How are you doing? Thank, yeah. you. Thank you so much I'm for being so here. so grateful. Yes, you. absolutely. My God. Now, of Thank course, you. this is a very personal story yes, to you. Is. Your 39-year-old daughter in love, Kira, went to the hospital to have you and your, her, she and her son's child, mm -hmm. second child, right. and then this tragedy happened. But before we get into that right. story, talk about Charles and Kira. They had an amazing <laughs> love affair. Did. They <laughs> did. Seriously. They had a love affair that yeah. was um, just amazing. And what Charles has always said is that she was far better than he deserved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that he called her um, the princess from Decatur. Mm. Uh, you know, because she was local, but they never knew each other. In fact, Kira was running her businesses in China. Really? This young sister was running 12, count mm -hmm. them, 12 businesses in China. And she and Charles met when she came home to visit her parents. Mm. Um, and it just turned out to be this wonderful love affair. I mean, we're talking about a sister who had her pilot's license, wow. and she was wow. a marathon runner, she raced cars, she spoke four languages. Wow. Fluently. 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 I mean, just fluently. Dynamic right? sister. And so Charles met her at a party, and she was literally leading the party. And he saw her, and he spoke to her, and she was like, Mom, I just really wanted to leave the party. Mm -hmm. And she went back to China and they kept talking and she said, I decided that I wanted to come home to be with him. Wow. Yes. And so she sold most of her businesses in China and she moved back to Atlanta. And oh, it was this amazing love affair. They found partners in each other. Yes, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. right. mm -hmm. And I have to tell you really quickly, no. Charles then took her to South America, right? packed a wedding dress, got the whole thing done for the beach, and said, baby, put on this dress. And mm. she said, what are we doing? She said, he said, a photo shoot. Mm. <laughs> and he had this wedding planned wow. on the beach. I wow. mean, that's the kind of love, love affair. Yeah. So then he took her to, what's this race with the hairpin curve? The, the where? In uh, Mon is it Monaco? Oh, Monaco? I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yes, I don't know. I'm not familiar. The race, with the, race. Yeah. The, uh, the, the 500. Uh, the it? Grand Prix. Oh, the Grand Prix. Okay, okay. The Grand Prix. Right, right, right. Mm. That hairpin turn. He took her for her birthday. Her birthday's in June, but he took her in May because that's when it was. She had no idea they were going. Mm. They, she knew they were going to, so they would do. Or she, or she would surprise him and take him to places. They travel all over the world. Beautiful. It was just this wonderful love affair. Mm -hmm. Love oh, affair. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I do want to talk to you a little bit about what happened at yeah. the hospital. Yes. Yes. She went in to give birth. Right. She never came out. We walked in. I mean, we had an entourage. You know, I mean, we went, we went thick. I mean, we were all in <laughs> Cedar Sinai. Yeah. We took over the whole waiting area. I mean, we just got everything. And so they already had an 18 month old yeah. who is Charles Spurgeon Johnson. The fifth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we go in, here we are, and where that's her mom right there, and she's all happy, and we're expecting Langston, mm -hmm. and it's just all good, you know? And we are expecting this wonderful baby. That mm -hmm. is the only piece of film that we have with her, with this new baby. And then, you know, less than 12 hours later, she's dead. Mm -hmm. She's dead. She's dead, she's gone. I mean, how could that be? How could we have lost her? Right, right. I just, yeah. um, Perfectly healthy. 
perfectly, perfectly healthy. healthy. Yes. I mean, we're talking about a marathon runner. We're yeah. talking about a woman who swam. We're talking about a skydiver. We're mm -hmm. talking about a race car driver. We're going to have more yeah. of Kira's story yes, when we yes. return. For those of you who are staying with us for the full hour, more of Judge Hatch's story, yes. uh, please keep watching. And please uh, make sure you look for Mother's Matter docuseries. Go to 11alive.com backslash Mother's Matter. And the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV. More Judge Hatch when we return. Yes. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We are here with Judge Hatchett, and she has been sharing her very personal story of her loss of her daughter-in-law, Kira, during childbirth. This happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too much. It yeah. happens too much. Okay, so we go in the hospital. You know, we are all excited, and she has the baby, and fortunately, Langston is born perfectly healthy. And then my son notices blood in her catheter. And so he calls for help. And they're like, oh, no, it's no big deal. She's just having a little bleeding, blah, 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 blah. And so it keeps going, it keeps going. But this is what is so, and this is just going to knock you out. They said, we're going to do a CAT scan. CAT scan stat, which means immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That happened because we noticed the blood about 4 o'clock. 6 o'clock, CAT scan stat, we're going to do this. 7 o'clock comes, 8 o'clock comes, 9 o'clock comes, no CAT scan. They start doing blood transfusions. We're just going to give her blood transfusions. She will be fine. In fact, the doctor said, if I have to go back in, I may have nicked her bladder. She'll be back in 15 minutes. It'll take us 15 minutes to do this. It's no big deal. So because Charles, who is 18 months old, had been there since noon, Langston was born around mm -hmm. 2.20, we went home, yeah. right? I would have never, you understand, I, I would have never. I know, we know. If I had thought, I would have called everybody I knew. I would have turned that hospital out, but I trusted them. I trusted them that she was going to be just fine. So fast forward, my son is asking what's going on, what's going on. They let her hemorrhage understand for 10 hours before they got her back to surgery they did not get her back to surgery until after midnight when they made the incision she coded immediately but she's a fighter she got back she came back they kept working on her they kept working on her and about 2 30 she was gone we lost her forever my son called me at two they called me at midnight said mom they're taking her back in i said fine i live on the side of optimism i said fine then he said, at 2, he called me, he said, Mom, things have gone terribly wrong. And I, I said, what's going on? And he hung up, and I kept calling back. I called his mother, her mother. I called everybody. No one answered. I'm thinking we've just got a bad signal. I just can't get through. A little after 4 o'clock, the door of the condo opens. I'm awake, but I'm in the room with, the, with Charles V. And he comes in, and he says, Mom... I need to talk to you. Kira passed. How could that be? How could that be, this vibrant woman? But I'm going to tell you, when they did that C-section, let's be very clear, it was her second C-section, and everybody needs to hear this. The cut time for a second C-section should be anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes, because you have to go back through the incision, back through the scar tissue, right, mm -hmm. for the second C-section. She is perfectly healthy. There's nothing wrong with her. Do you know what the cut time for Langston's birth was? What? Do you want to know? Yes. It was less than two minutes. He butchered her. He butchered her. And I invite you all to go. I have been very transparent with the complaint that's been filed against Cedars Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles and all the hospitals. It is on my website, thehatchetfirm.com. You can read it verbatim. I did not embellish. I did not speculate. It is the medical record verbatim. He butchered her, and no one did anything to save her life. The, all the reports say that if she had been back into surgery by 6 o'clock, she would have been alive. They did not get her back into the operating room until after midnight. The doctor did not come in to make the incision until 12.22 in the morning. Mm. She could have been saved. Yes. Now, this is a tragedy. Why does this happen more often than not to black, black women? Black women. 
what we are finding out is that they want to say, oh, we don't get proper prenatal care, we don't do this, that, and the other. That was not Kira's story. Mm -hmm. She had the best, everything. everything. She, ha she was in great shape. What we're finding out is that black women are not being listened to. Mm -hmm. We are not being listened to, and in too many cases, it is my opinion that we are seen as less than human. Mm -hmm. And our job has to be, and why I'm so grateful to you today to tell this story, is that we have to sound the alarm and that we have to be our own best advocates. And if something seems not right, then you have to keep, but, but we did that. We kept asking and they said, oh, it's fine. But when Kira died, that doctor went out the back door. He didn't even talk to my son. He went out the back door and sent the other attending doctors out to talk to her. And so we waited for a year because Charles, um, we just needed to <coughs> well, just grieving. kind of process. Yes. Yes. But he made the decision Mother's Day of 17 to go public. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that he I has. Am. Yes, I am Because too. he has told the story repeatedly all over this country. And I am enormously proud of the yeah. work that he's done because we're going to save some lives. Yes, yes, we are. Let's talk about it. Because if Martin. I didn't know, yeah. and I'm an informed woman who I believe that I am smart and astute and I try to be on top of stuff, if I didn't know that women were dying like this, that means a whole lot of people didn't know that. Absolutely. Story. That's right. So you have teamed up uh, with our parent company, Tech Yes. Let's yes. talk about this partnership and yes. why you felt like, obviously, it's, it's so important. It is so important that we tell the story. Um, Mothers Matter, um, and Charles spoke on the National Mall the Sunday before Mother's Day, and we had you know lots of people from all over the country, mm -hmm. and we have been on everything that you can imagine. I mean, yeah. all kinds of media. But very importantly, we've been on the Hill lobbying. Mm -hmm. And there's legislation pending both in the House and in the Senate. Beautiful. And Charles testified before yeah. the House Committee, uh, the Health House Committee, and there was an old, old House of Representative guy who was from the Deep South, and he said, I've been on this committee for more than 20 years, and I tell you, Mr. Johnson, I've never heard a more compelling testimony. Oh, wow. yeah. There were men on that panel who were in tears when Charles finished. Yeah. But it doesn't, you know, tears don't help us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when Charles spoke at Kira's funeral, this is what he said, we've got to move from pain to purpose. And that's what this is about. Yes. Yeah. So let me also say to you, that the hardest part for me is watching these two little boys without their mom. So Charles, at three, he's four now, but last February he came into my room and I said, sweetie, because I heard him wake up. So I got up and he said, Grandma G, do you have my mommy's cell phone? And I said, no. He said, I need you to find my mommy's cell phone, Grandma G, because I need you to call her and tell her I want her to come home because I don't want her to be in heaven. I want her to be with us. So he turned four in September, the two-year-old, then says to me, Grandma G, is mommy coming to Charles's birthday party? I want her to come to the birthday party. When a child says to you at 20 months old, I want to go to heaven because I want to see my mommy, what do you do? How do you, how do you process that? And my prayer is that the greatest honor that we can pay Kira is that we have to send other mothers home with their children. Yes. And that is why I'm here. That's why I'm grateful to you. That's why I appreciate you for allowing me to tell this story because the women and men who come to me and say, judge now, I see it differently. Or a woman who stopped me at a hotel the other day, I was having dinner and said, my daughter's best friend, you saved her life because she was hemorrhaging and because we knew Kira's story, we knew what to do. Yes. So we need senators written, we need House of Congress members written, we've got to get this legislation passed, and we've got to have a different standard. Georgia is the worst of every <coughs> state. We are on the 50th in terms of childbirth-related deaths. Oh my God. Judge Hadgett, thank you Ooh. so much for sharing your story. Yes.
we love Charles yes. and the boys. Yes. <laughs> Next time I have to bring the boys. Yes, that would be great. Oh my God, you, they need to come and Just feel all this love. Excuse oh me, so yes, me. I have to bring them with me. Absolutely. Yes. You will love them. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your personal story. Um, and I know today, lives have been saved by yes. this information. To see more of Judge Hatchett's story, look for the Mothers Matter docuseries. Go to 11alive.com backslash Mothers Matter. Thank and the Judge. Hatchett firm, yes. I have a national law firm based here in Atlanta, Atlanta. Yes. and we're making a difference. I'm the only black woman who has a national law firm anywhere in the country. Judge Linda Hatchett. The Hatchett firm. You better. <laughs> you better. Thank you so much. This is such a, we return right after this.